I mean, Dr. Cass, I understand part of the process is going to be putting them in isolation. But the fact is, they're, I guess, is it hard in isolation to know that this is not a real situation? It's not life and death. We're not really on Mars. How do you replicate as best you can those sort of that day to day existence of being on Mars in your isolation here on Earth? This is a very, it's a good question, and it's a very difficult one to answer because, in many ways, we cannot. Because on an, in an isolation chamber, as uh, uh, Norbert pointed out, uh, one can really stop at any point and say, I won't leave, which you can't do when you're going to Mars. And as a, as a matter of fact, in the Sphinx isolation uh, project, where uh, there were three visiting uh, crews and uh, a long-term crew of 11 months, one of the visiting crews decided, members decided he would quit the isolation. Uh, which is what not possible if you're going to Mars. So there is a certain lack of reality, obviously, in an uh, isolation chamber. That said, there are many exercises that can be done in group dynamics, uh, whether it be uh, creating conflict or stress, which after a while, the members of the team forget that they're in a scientific exercise and begin to think this is real life and therefore although uh, isolation chamber keeping people inside for a while is not a replication of a Mars mission we can create certain stressful situations and some of them will become fairly naturally coming up and we can study them and help the crew learn how to deal with those situations. And those can be very real indeed. So such training which one can give, like group dynamics, we would hope that the crew, these members who are undergoing this training, will become equipped to deal with certain situations and to set up their own uh, type of functioning group because we don't know what it will be and as Robert pointed out it may not be it may be anarchy it might be democracy it might be dictatorship uh, which might function best but if they are equipped with the tools to deal with it and to do their own observation we try to train we would train people to recognize the symptoms where they notice a problem is going to come up and how do you deal with the problem before it becomes critical? These are the kind of things. We will give them the tools. We won't be trying to make them compatible. Rather, we'll give them the tools to deal with unknown. And they will be the ones who will have to handle it. And these are, uh, exercises where we will be uh, isolating them, we will be trying to perform such exercises which will uh, equip them to deal with the real thing in the future. Now, I'm just curious, in, in terms of the uh, of the isolation, how much of it of, of the time is spent putting them in stressful situations to see how they react under those sort of situations, and how much of it is balanced out by just let them be and let them do their thing and have a little bit of fun because they should be enjoying this whole process because you want them to be excited about starting a new colony on Mars. How do you balance that? got to get useful data out of this to also making sure they're enjoying this experience as well. Uh, I think both is important because, but it's, it's always, you have to think, we watch them all the time. And, and the um, people online will be also watch them all the time. So the point is, they are relaxed and the relaxed time is for us a lot of information too. What they do in their free time. Can they use it usefully or they just sit and stare at the ceiling or get bored or depressed or whatever it is? So this is useful for us too. Uh, we will give them a lot of situations, but then we calm it down and, and calm it up. But it's always the unexpected one we have to give them because you never know when an alarm gets off and it doesn't matter which time in the day or which time in the night. And that's where we put them up. But they will have, we want to see what do they need in, in the time of freedom because some things we didn't think about it. They say, hey, we would like to have this and this additionally, or whatever it is. We want to learn from that too. Is there something else they need additionally? So that's where we will work on that too. Because from the space station, to be honest, I never heard an astronaut who sits up there and say, hey, I would like to have this and this. Maybe I just didn't hear everything, but we don't have the information about that. But from our applicants, because they are on Mars, they, they have some needs we haven't thought about it at all. 
So that's what we want to learn. That's why we give them a, a freedom. I can't put a certain percentage on it. We have to go uh, to see how the situation goes along.